Welcome everybody to our second online Messy Church. We're glad to see you. Thanksgiving is coming when we give thanks to God for all good things. You know, sometimes we put blinders on and all we see are the things that really bother us. And that's not having gratitude. That sort of gives us a bad attitude. That's what our messy church is about. Gratitude changes attitude. We need to look for the good things. And you know, I have a lot of gratitude tonight because my good friend, Mika Schroeder, is doing a great story. There are even some horrible things in it. But you're going to be able to see the good stuff as well. And Keegan is going to show us how to make butter. Yummy, creamy butter for our Thanksgiving table. And you're not even going to need a cow to make this at home. So welcome, and here's Mika. Has anyone ever said to you, you have a bad attitude? Maybe you created a big fuss when you were asked to do a small task. Or maybe you were overreacting to something that someone said. Maybe you just felt that life wasn't being fair to you at the moment. Our attitude really makes a difference. If we are always seeing things as problems, we miss seeing the good parts. One of my favorite books is this book by Judith Viorst. It's called Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. I bet many of you have heard or seen this book before. Everything seems to go wrong for Alexander. Let me just read a few pages to you. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth, and now there's gum in my hair. And when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard, and by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running, and I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window, too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be car sick. No one even answered. At school, Mrs. Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. At singing time, she said, I sang too loud. At counting time, she said, I left out 16. Who needs 16? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag, and Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds, and Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll that had little coconut sprinkles on the top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My bath was too hot. I got soap in my eyes, my marble went down the drain, and I had to wear my railroad train pajamas. I hate my railroad train pajamas. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out and I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not with me. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says, some days are like that. Alexander certainly felt that it had been a very bad day. We probably all have had some bad days, right? But what Alexander forgot to do was to look around to see what things were going right. For example, it looks like he had a nice bed and a comfortable room and he had toys. He got a ride to school. He usually had some dessert in his lunch. In the evenings, 
He could have a hot bath and comfortable pajamas and brothers and a cat to keep him company. Alexander had many things to be grateful for. Sometimes when things go wrong for us, we forget to look around to see what has gone right. We forget that there are many things that we could and should be thankful for. Our Bible reading for today says, Always be happy, never stop praying, give thanks whatever happens, that is what God wants for you in Christ Jesus. And it's important that we do this not just for the month of October or the season of Thanksgiving, but that we make this part of our everyday lives. This is a really good lesson for us to remember during this time of COVID-19. It's been a challenging few months for many of us. There have been things that haven't gone the way we'd like them to go. For six months, we weren't able to get together with our friends. You weren't able to go to school. Many adults worked from home. Many of our lessons and sports activities were canceled. Like Alexander, we might have felt that we were having a bad day a bad week or even a bad year. But it's especially important during these very difficult times to remember the words of the Bible. Always be happy, never stop praying, give thanks whatever happens, that is what God wants for you in Christ Jesus. It's important that we look for the one or two things that have gone right, that are still good, that we can appreciate and be thankful for. Some of you that are a bit older might want to look up the book, The Diary of a Young Girl. It was written by Anne Frank. During World War II, Anne and her family had to hide in an attic. They had to remain completely quiet every day from 8.30 in the morning until 6.30 in the evening. They couldn't make a sound so that nobody would hear creaking floorboards and discover their hiding place. They hid there for 25 months. So they didn't step outside for more than two years. Yet Anne never complained. She wrote about her family's hiding place in a diary, calling it an ideal place to hide. She wrote, it may be damp and lopsided, but there's probably not a more comfortable hiding place in all of Amsterdam. No, in all of Holland. She remained optimistic and patient, reminding all of us that attitude is a choice. Let me share another story with you. The story of the candy and the pebble. A group of people was given this activity to do. They were given a candy to suck on or to chew on, and they were given a small pebble to put in their shoe. Then they were told to go for a walk around the block. When they came back, they were to talk about their experience. Well, what do you think they said? Do you think they said, oh, that candy was so delicious? Do you think they said, that candy was good, but I could feel that pebble in my shoe? What would you have said? Well, do you know what most of them said? Most of them talked about the pebble in their shoe and how much that hurt. Very few people said anything about the candy. It's kind of a lesson to us that we tend to focus on those pebbles, those annoyances, those little things that are uncomfortable. And we forget to look at the good things, those candies in our mouth and how delicious they are. God reminds us about the importance of a positive attitude. Give thanks in all circumstances. Your heart will be cheerier when you focus on the positive. This Thanksgiving and every day, 
Let's focus less on complaining about our small discomforts and more on praising God for what we are blessed with. So to remind us to always look for what's good or right, to always be optimistic and hopeful, and to always look with gratitude and thanksgiving for the things in our life that are good, I'd like to show you an activity that you could do with your family. It involves a pumpkin. A pumpkin is always a sign of thanksgiving or Halloween, isn't it? So take the pumpkin and at the top of it write, we are thankful for. And then every day when you sit down with the adults in your family at a meal, write three things that you are thankful for. For example, I might write Bella. Bella is our dog. I might write bike trails, the wildlife that we see on the bike trails. And I might write flowers, the flowers that are still blooming in the garden at the end of September. If you do that for the month of October, by the time that Halloween comes around, you will have a pumpkin filled with words of thanksgiving. It will be an excellent way to show that you have listened to the words of the Bible. Always be happy, never stop praying. Give thanks, whatever happens, that is what God wants for you. And we're going to ask Father Tim to have a prayer with us. Well, uh, uh, great to see you all again. I am so sorry that we're now able to gather in person. Uh, at the same time, I give thanks for the creativity and uh, hard work of all those involved in ensuring that we can be Messy Church uh, virtually. Go to offer now a prayer. Dear God, thank you for your wonderful gifts to me, for the warm sun on my face, for my family and friends, for my health and safety. Please help those who need food, shelter and safety. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.